well folks grab a coffee this is going to be a episode um, in depth about the remote ID it was about to happen today or tomorrow in this episode um, you're going to watch this episode if you have bought a drone if you're planning to buy a drone um, if you are also in the FPV hobby and you just made a purchase of uh, the new DJI Mavic Air so if you are having all of this and you are into drones this is the episode for you because things are going to change um, within a year year and a half so it's not immediately on effect it starts within year and a half so we will not waste time we'll begin jump in directly don't forget to grab a coffee because this is going to be a little bit a little bit tricky a little bit laborious a little bit intensive but we need to know this unmanned aircraft is what in layman's term or anybody's term is known as a drone so what is an unmanned aircraft this is an unmanned aircraft uas which is an unmanned aircraft system is the whole ecosystem that supports this aircraft which means your controllers goggles ground station and thereon Our operating rules again uh, we are going to see this part which is section one which is standard remote id unmanned aircraft broadcasts remote id messages directly from the ua via radio frequency broadcast likely wi-fi or bluetooth technology and broadcast will be compatible with existing personal wireless devices so a broadcast system that will be connected over to your radio um i'm probably sure it's not a radio it should be your phone um you connect that to your phone and this will relay the message now since it's having um you know you can be it can be a radio frequency broadcast so if you are operating in 2.4 or 5.8 you have to make sure that uh, what sort of gigahertz you're using because 2.4 is a longer wavelength 5.8 will have shorter like a distance coverage so that is very complicated again second is standard remote id messages include uaid serial number it will also include your la latitude longitude altitude and velocity of ua now this velocity means uh, they are going to talk about kinetic energy and uh, impact and we will be also discussing impact um impact uh, of impact at certain certain velocity you know like to be honest but um they do want to see what's your latitude longitude they do want to know what velocity you're flying in and um, altitude of control station emergency status and time mark very important so these are the data that the fa would require from you and uh, remote id messages will be available to most to most personal wireless devices within the range of the broadcast however correlating serial number or session id with registration database will be limited to the faa and can be made available to authorized local law enforcement national security personnel upon request now this is going to be very very tricky it's going to be very very tricky for people um those who are not locals um it will be people those who are doing cross-country kind of tour going from one state to another state and uh, this was my problem to be very honest uh, you know that making your or you know like giving control of your devices taking from the air to local law enforcement i totally understand why if did that to stop you know any sort of unauthorized um, you know flights and everything but i did have a lot of i was literally scared with this particular uh, phase when I'm especially when I'm doing cross-country uh, kind of travels and I'm flying outside my state and uh, they also want to know range of remote ID broadcast may vary as each UA must be designed to maximize the range at which the broadcast can be received so it's going to be a very tricky situation for us flyers because um, apart from carrying a GPS we will be carrying um, you know like a for FPV pilots, you'll be carrying a remote ID, ID, ID identification device, which will be on your quad. And you have to decide what sort of frequency you want to output. For example, right now, 
I'm using TBS Crossfire, which is 900 megahertz, um, using uh, 5.8 gigahertz channel. So which means I have more or less 2.4 gigahertz available for me. So you have to think uh, which channel you want to put because otherwise with Wi-Fi, you will get very restricted range. You need to use radio frequency. Now, from there, uh, we will be heading over to the second second page in which says UA with remote ID broadcast module. Now, this is for FPV pilots. Those who are doing FPV, those who are making uh, drones, um, and also these are not going to be the ones that are coming pre-built because we do not know whether the remote ident ID identification device will be distributed to manufacturers like iFlight, you know, like other companies, or that is something that we have to install and we have to we have to show proper paperwork to get that. In a nutshell, I would say that uh, if you are planning to get a drone or anything, uh, probably manufacturers are the best way. This hobby is getting literally under so much of restriction. Now, here comes the part two, which is broadcast module, maybe separate device that is attached to an unmanned aircraft or a feature built into the aircraft. So that we understand. Enables retrofit of existing UA and broadcast module serial number must be entered into the registration record for the unmanned aircraft. So uh, the broadcast serial number will be, you have to register that. Broadcast module messages will include serial number, latitude, longitude, altitude, velocity, and um, location, takeoff location, and time mark. So very, very important is that where they want to know how fast you are flying, where you are flying, are you flying over people. Uh, UA remotely identifying with a broadcast module must be operated within within visual line of sight at all times and here comes FPV most of the time we do not now uh, flight fly in line of sight so it is very important and very critical that uh, we do line of sight now you it can be you can be an FPV, your friend might be maintaining line of sight, but there has to be somebody else who, sh who should watch the drone all the time. And compatibility with personal wireless devices and range of remote ID broadcast module message similar to standard remote ID. So again, we now have to figure out what we are going to do with remote ID integration on our quads and how are we planning to do that. Um, I do not know beta flight doesn't have that option probably beta flight developers need to do something about that i nav on the other hand might have that option i'm pretty sure um but it's a very complicated scenario number three fa recognized identification area which is going to be a good news for people those who are flying in communities like for example i fly with the polo fpv uh, group so if i'm flying in my group and I'm flying in my field where we fly more or less every time, all these stuff becomes no problem. And organizations eligible to apply for establishment of FR FRIA include community-based organizations, primary and secondary level education institution, trade schools, multiple colleges and universities. So you guys can set up a campus for flying drones or anything or drone development or anything because that is the future to be honest. And um, you have to make sure you register that with the FA and you will get an FRIA which is FA recognized identification area where the government will know that there is UAS or UA operation going on on that particular segment or that particular area in the county or you know like state and FRIA authorizations will be valid for 48 months and can be terminated if one of your members decide to go rogue next comes design and production rules for manufacturers i'm totally going to skip this because this doesn't concern us um that will be for people you know like those who are making drones and everything if you're a drone manufacturer go through that and uh, here comes the part of the dji mavic air 2 this is called other provisions in a remote id final rule uh, your mavic air 2 is equipped with something called adsb now, ADSB is a transponder. So there's two forms: ADSB in, ADSB out. ADSB is a system, in a nutshell, 
that is equipped more or less all manned aircraft are equipped with basically they broadcast and relay message to each aircraft you know in the air just to understand where each of these aircrafts are located at just to prevent collision ADSB was included in your DJI Mavic Air 2 now the thing is that there's a lot of confusion watch this this says the final rule amends part 191 and 107 to prohibit the use of ADSB out for ATC transponders on US unless otherwise authorized by the administrator or if flying under a flight van in a two-way radio communication with ATC. ADC and ADSB out and ATC transporter authorization is likely for large US operating controlled airspace and part 89 prohibits the US of ADSB out as a means of meeting remote ID requirements which means that um, your you should not have ADSB out so they do not want you know like all this communication going on with small drones or anything you might get instructed by somebody or your friends by a fake rumor that the DJI Mavic Air 2 has got ADSB out completely wrong here is a snapshot just to show you that this, this has ADSB in which means it only receives the information it doesn't send out any information to the air traffic control about your drone it just gathers the data shows you where are other manned aircrafts located at so yes I am definitely in some for something like that in Mavic Air 2 because that's not illegal at all so you are good to have a DJI Mavic Air 2 because that has only ADSB in and this is a special emphasis for people those who are a DJI Mavic Air 2 owners now for aeronautical research uh, this is not going to be a thing but foreign registered civil unmanned aircraft operations in the United States so for example you're coming from another country and you are having a Mavic and you're bringing to US you want to fly in US for example you're doing a road trip might as well just use the drones hey the rule allows you a registered in a foreign country to be operated in the United States only if the operator files a notice of identification with the FAA this enables the FAA and the law enforcement to correlate a remote ID broadcast within a person responsible for the operation of foreign registered UA. So basically, there is no way to go around with a remote ID broadcast and everything. So, major changes, what changes did they make? Let's go ahead and check what major changes they make in the final rule. Final rule, network-based internet transmission required have been eliminated. The fire final rule contains broadcast only requirements. So it will be internet-based transmission, network-based and all that stuff totally gone, which means they did look into the factor of privacy. So that is a huge, huge win for people, those who have been fighting, um, you know, like for privacy purposes and everything. And I was totally spooked with network-based and internet transmission for a privacy because okay so my data is going somewhere else that will be very very um, unethical so they did look into that and it contains only broadcast requirements so in broadcast it's broadcasting only your location your speed basically kind of all of your gps data all of our quads are equipped with gps all i think beta flight needs to do is reroute all that information use the remote id and uh, you know like FPV uh, board manufacturers they need to place a make a spare UART and that should that we can you know solder a, a remote ID identification device to that's pretty much it so that's a good job US operators under the exemption of limited cre recreational operations may continue to register with FA once rather than registering each aircraft so that has become a rule if I have an aircraft which is this this is registered to the FA have not done a single flight on it so but i have my registration of this that is the reason i've not pasted anything because i have no plan to fly um this month or so probably next month i can use this registration on all of my quads so one registration number i can use i do not have to you know register multiple uss at the same time so that's a good one uh, limited remote id us has been eliminated and replaced with remote id broadcast module requirements to enable existing UA to comply that i can understand if i am applicants may be suited to the fa beginning 18 months so basically all the institutions clubs and everything you have to submit your application to fa and uh, and you know like the beginning effect uh, that 
after beginning 18 months after the effective date of rule and education institutions now may apply for FIRIAs as well as community based organization so education institutions those who are trying to teach their school stem based learning coding python and everything and they want to integrate drone system to that they can apply for it for the first time so that's a very very good scenario so that was kind of it folks for the for a general rule of remote id but here is the thing should i distribute this into a second episode i think i should do that because otherwise it will get too much overwhelming uh, in our second episode this is what we are planning to do this is a, a 292 page document i've already gone through all that uh, but this is going to be um, a final notice of a great modification that is coming up which is more directed for cinewhoop style flying compared to freestyle flying so cinewhoop style flying flyers those who have a lot of cinewhoops you guys have a good news coming up because um, now FA will allow you to fly over people so you can fly over people but there are certain requirements they did consider a laceration injury and energy impact so your velocity and the amount of velocity sorry the velocity of the drone and how much impact is that drone going to land on a person on a mishap is what FAA, FAA is considering and I have laid down out of going through 292 pages I did found some very very interesting points and we will come back to that as you know I've marked those points out here <sighs> mark those points but this is going to be the operation of small unmanned aircraft system over people so if you are flying your drones over people what do you need to know and there's a bad news that if you are having Mavic Air 2 you will have to use prop guards and uh, you know that prop guards significantly decrease performance of a quad especially at high wind areas so you have to be very careful when you're using that um, and what sort of prop, prop guards you are going to use um, there is a lot of stuff to discuss so let's join and join back to another time maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow to understand in depth about operation of small unmanned aircraft system over people so stay tuned if you're interested in this topic we are going to go in depth because i think you have the right to know and you should not be mixed with uh, ideas or thoughts of other people those who have no knowledge of what's going on rather than trying to understand what fa has laid down for us um, the articles will be the link will be published to you under in the comment section sorry in the description so go through the description to understand because remote id is going to change a lot of stuff and it's going to have a huge impact in way uh, we build drones we you know for us fpv pilots the way we fly our drones and it will be also um, an eye-opening feature for software developers or open source software developers like people those who are running beta flight uh, Pavel Spicheski Pavel Spicheski who runs INAF and these developers do need to have do need to do some modifications to their software also so take care see you folks on another episode till then goodbye and uh, have a nice night